Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am the president of Digital Policy and Law Group. My name is Jorge Negrete, and it is a pleasure to be here with you in one of the most important events of the past few years, not only in Mexico, but also in Latin America, for a very simple reason. We are dedicated to a fiber, optic fiber a connection, a fiber, and very few other topics are as important as this one. And this is just a brief presentation as to what's going to happen today in our summit. Very few topics are as important or relevant for the world of telecommunications as that of optical fiber. But the world of telecommunications is a world in which we can provide fundamental rights to people like education, uh, public safety and health, but also brings about the world of uh, economic growth, competitiveness and innovation. And a big part of this technology has to do with physical infrastructure. If there's no physical infrastructure, there's no competitiveness, and there's no innova innovation or fundamental rights. And part of this infrastructure is the world of optical fiber. This world of optic, optical fiber has several uh, um, different hues. Many nations and countries that have generated competitiveness and developed a global economy are competitive in nature as well, have advanced technological growth through optical fiber. And that allows us to expand the communication in a more efficient way. It is a lot more uh, friendly towards communication and connectivity and allows us to generate a huge breadth of information and it creates better services in turn. It also allows us to access new applications and allows us to generate innovation and um, benefit of telecommunications at large. Therefore, optical fiber is a, view, is a venue for innovation, but it also improves the quality of the services of companies that have been digitized and operate in the network. And one of the most relevant topics is that there's no 5G world or digital transformation if we do not have optical fiber. The world of optical fiber has different penetrations around the world. In Africa, we have what we have the red bar over here, which represents the world of copper wiring infrastructure. It is a continent that has very uh, backlogged technology. Uh, Latin America and the Americas at large have a lot of penetration for uh, 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 copper wiring, which is uh, plummeting in terms of infrastructure, which is unavoidable, but we see quite reasonable penetration, uh, respectable at least in terms of optical fiber, especially for um, FTTX. In the case of Asia, this is a territory where in which optical fiber has found its true home. The uh, countries like Singapore, China, or uh, Japan, as you see in the green bar, have developed the optical fiber towards the home in a spectacular way. They have the FTTX uh, feature there and has become extremely relevant in the Asian market. In terms of Europe, however, there have been a few problems. There are two types of Europe, if you will, Northern Europe and Southern Europe. We still have a few important segments of copper wiring and cable. Uh, we have a deployment, however, of um, copper cable in, in still in countries like Portugal and Spain. But in other regions of the world, like Oceania, we have a lot of deployment for optical fiber, the FTTX feature, that is. We have uh, two um, lines here that show us the increasing growth of optical fiber in our two variant FTTP and FTTX. It is unavoidable growth that you can see is increasing, at least in terms of the first projections that we have towards 2026. Now, for Latin America, the uh, broadband at large, there are countries like Uruguay, Uruguay, in which broadband coming from Argentina, for instance, have a 77.2 percent of penetration, and they have quite notable speeds for the region. That is, as you can see, 
in the right side of the gap. We have 22.16 Mbps. Brazil, given the large surgery they have, there's a lot of the efforts in terms of deployment for optical fiber, and 51.5% has been installed, and they have a speed of 17.89 Mbps. Chile, however, is the big winner because they have a, a, a lot of deployment and they have up to 16.1 of MVPS, 27.8 uh, for Mexico, 15.23 for Colombia, Costa Rica for 13. And we also have, uh, as I told you, this is a very revealing image in the case of Europe. We know that Northern part of Europe uh, has a lot of deployment for optical fiber, like Lithuania, for instance, with 70. 5.66% of their infrastructure deployed already. Sweden with a 17.02%, Latvia and Spain. Spain, however, is a special phenomenon that I'm going to speak of later because they have a lot of speed there, 55.84, or Iceland even, which is 116, or Luxembourg. So they have a lot of speed, as you can see there. And of course, they have a lot of penetrations. You can see that too. And in the case of Singapore, 92.7%, 90, Korea, 80.91%, and Japan, 80.79% of the total of their broadband that uh, goes through fiber optics. Spain, however, is an extraordinary uh, case. It concentrates uh, all the infrastructure that is being deployed throughout Spain, and it is the equivalent as well as their investment efforts to all the investment of compared to the United Kingdom, uh, France, Italy, together, all put together. The regulation that they have achieved since 2013 as uh, they became leaders of telecommunications has generated a phenomenon of uh, optical fibers deployment that has happened, that has yet to be um, mimicked. They even provide 5G and other types of uh, services thanks to the stimuli that they have in their deployment. And we also have elements that does not allow us to deploy uh, optical fiber. For instance, the expensive last mile, the, the difficulty to access uh, passive infrastructure and public infrastructure, especially in provinces, and areas that are uh, away from the capital, the access to pipelines, the right of way. And we also have different regulatory approximations that happen between states, which uh, creates a mesh or a very complex system of uh, municipal and local legislation, which is a challenge for everybody. We also have uh, bad examples. Like uh, we do have an extraordinary example like Spain, but we also have a terrible thing like the United Kingdom, with, even with their entirety of a regulation tradition that they have, they have yet to achieve the deployment or public expense, uh, which uh, goes under 25%, that, that is uh, 5 billion um, pounds that they had set for investments. They didn't achieve that, and they only have 85.85% uh, of coverage. And I want to end my presentation with the next. There's a series of elements that we call externalities. And these are positive elements that result from the deployment of optical fiber. First off, the um, large broadband will incentivize research and technological development, especially in universities. This is an element that uh, provides a, a, a way of being to startups, and it generates communities and benefit for e-commerce. The more stability you have in communication, the better your e-commerce will happen. But we also have a better way of relating to the global world of the economy. We have other um, cross-cutting aspects like health, public health, and we can also generate incentives for an audiovisual industry. For instance, in Spain, when they generated these uh, types of access, and deployment, they have a potentialized in audiovisual industry. Optical, optical fiber has been an incentive for the audio, audiovisual industry to join the 8K um, efforts and become part of uh, Latin America too. The industry of visual content 
has been potentialized and boosted by, bolstered by uh, optical fiber. And well, this is the end of my presentation. And I would like to conclude by saying that we need nowadays uh, an entirely new world of regulation and legislation for optical fiber. Our institute here in Mexico has worked with many, many federal entities to make sure that we homogenize everything in terms of legislation, but we have to speed them up for the municipalities and areas away from the capital. We have to have a digital agenda for every single piece of the government that would allow us to provide better infrastructure, but also allow to deploy the benefits of the digital world. Mexico has to become a nation uh, imbued with optical fiber, and we have to become a society that will allow growth and transformation into the digital world through better infrastructure projects. And a good part of these projects are centered in optical fiber. Thank you all. I hope you have an amazing summit and have a good day.